Before I start today's scheduled program, I just thought that I would put out a small disclaimer saying I will not be providing a download link for the software you are about to see. Reason being is I will not promote software piracy. And yes, I did download this program from a torrent place, but that's just because I wanted to demonstrate it for you guys. It doesn't mean that I'm going to spread it along to you guys for your personal enjoyment because that's illegal. So it is illegal doing this, but you know what? I'm taking risks with it anyway. So you know what? It just, I don't really, I don't really care. So just know I will not provide download links. Otherwise it will not be very fun for you guys in the comment section. So anyways, back to your regularly scheduled programs. Coming soon to a Jordan Waller YouTube channel near you. Anyways, today's video is... <laughs> oh god, I don't even know where to start. You remember when Microsoft's next generation OS, which I'm running on this laptop, was going to be called Windows 9? I remember all the rumors that people used to say that it was going to be called Windows 9? Well, it ended up being called, uh, as many of you all might know of it today, if I can find the button, there it is. A lot of people today know of it as Windows 10. So, obviously, it's not Windows 9. But today, we're taking a look at Windows 9, and I cannot hold my laughter back because I found this so funny. So yes, Windows 9. And you might also think in the name, Windows 7. Probably the OS it's based off of is Windows 7. And the uh, the DVD cover is just classic. Got your typical picture of a DVD-ROM with uh, Windows 9 on it. Actually, I kind of like the way they color scheme that, but either way. So you got the traditional colors on the Metro Windows icon. 64-bit edition, they actually spelled it correct which is crazy. Freeware Sys 2014. That must have been the developers who uh, edited this. Very nice. Very nice. And it comes in the largest ISO I've ever seen, which is kind of crazy. Um, that would require a dual layer DVD because holy Christ, that thing is freaking huge. Anyways, I mean, that's just huge for a 64-bit Windows image. That's just ridiculous. So anyways... Um, I'm currently installing it using good old Rufus, best utility ever. And it, this laptop is not exactly the fastest thing in the world. It's only a Core 2 Duo 2.2 gigahertz, so you can't exactly blame it for taking so long to write the ISO to a USB stick, but sheesh, the install.wim folder is just large. Like, I don't know what kind of stuff is on this machine, or on this machine, on this ISO, but we're about to find out. Um, and I'm not going to be running it on this computer because obviously it's got a Windows 10 Pro installation I'd like to keep. Neither am I going to be running it on this thing because it also has Windows 10 and then I just got the computer today. So I kind of want to keep the installation that's on it. So we're going to use VMware Workstation here on my Surface, uh, my Surface Pro 3. And we're going to take a look at it in VMware Workstation and see just what we're dealing with. So while my installation of VMware Workstation Pro installs, let's take a look at the uh, ISO here. Now it had a uh, version of Rufus on here, but I decided to delete it because it was like version 1.4.1, .1, so quite an ancient version of Rufus. Um, so we have a boot folder, that's Windows. Um, the EFI folder is Windows. This right here looks to be some form of um software package for installing things like drivers and uh stuff like that so that's probably uh stuff like that freeware stuff it looks like um it's empty um sources will be the windows 7 stuff so this is the person who made it um yeah about the OS. It's running Windows 9 Professional. 40 new applications and stuff. Really, this is not a pirated Windows 7 operating system. Yeah, it's pirated if you're torrenting it, so uh, it's illegal. 
So looks like it comes with a lot of bullshit. <laughs> oh my god. Look at all that stuff. Uh and that's just VMware workstation that can come off my USB stick. Oh, interesting. I actually ran it from the USB stick. I shouldn't have done that. Anyways, um, I gotta put in my license key real quick. I actually decided to not use a virtual machine. We're actually going to install this on actual hardware. So, here goes nothing, I suppose. Oh, crap. I gotta remember. Power switch. It might be beneficial to your experience is to have a little bit of power to turn on the computer by some possible chance. I can't remember if this thing uses the onboard video or dedicated graphics. It looks like it's using the dedicated graphics. So let's just uh, grab my, DM my stupid DMS59 adapter and we'll hook that up. Okay, external graphics are in. We are on. Escape for the boot menu. Mouse should work. It's in PS2 mode. It's a PS2 mouse. Alrighty, USB flash drive. Press any key. It's still fairly standard so far. Fairly standard Windows loading prompt. Nothing unusual yet so far. You know, nothing different from any Windows Vista or 7 setup process. And the startup screen looks fairly similar. We are running this on a Core 2 Duo 3.33 GHz Wolfdale processor with 4 gigs of RAM. So it should run pretty competently. The only thing that I'm going to assume is going to probably not be the greatest is the graphics card. It's running an ATI Radeon X1300 with 256 megs of video memory. So it might not be up to par with some of the Windows 7 stuff. But it, ha it does have a built-in driver, so it should work. And this is totally different. We had a gradient background with turquoise here and light blue at the top. So quite the interesting screen here. With obviously the watermark being Freeware Sys 2014 at the bottom right hand corner of the screen. And they're using a copyrighted image. Ha! Huh. Couldn't get away with me now. I saw that. <laughs> so, kind of interesting. This is a very interesting setup process. So the default stuff is German. We should have English. Yep, English United States. We're installing Windows 9 Professional. Excuse me, I got a message on my screen. I got it dismissed though. So yeah, Windows 9 Professional 64-bit. It was made April 16th, 2014. Which was ironically eight days after Windows XP left uh, extended support and it was a discontinued product. This inter this installation interface is just bright. I don't know what's up with it, but that's crazy. Okay, I'm I'm actually installing this to my SSD. Oh, I'm installing this to my SSD. Oh crap! I better not do that. <laughs> I just I don't want to wipe out the Windows 10 install that it has, but. At the same time, it doesn't actually have an activation on it, so it really doesn't matter to me. So, what the heck, I'll just format it. Because the, the installation that the uh, USB, the SSD that this thing has is doesn't have any activation on it, so it doesn't matter to me. It was used in another computer, so it doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to erase these partitions, because those went on the SSD at the same time. So, the low power storage thing can also be erased because it doesn't look like there's really anything on it that I need. Actually, you know what? Here's what we're going to do. Let's just delete all the partitions. <laughs> I'm just sitting you know, like dicing through this goddamn thing. And just delete all the partitions. Now, if I remember correctly, um, you have to make a partition that's 120 gigs in size because the way that this SSD is laid out is... The first 120 gigs are for the solid state, and the rest of them go on to the uh, physical hard drive that it has. So you have to start with a. Uh, you have to start with the. I'm trying to find a calculator here, and I can't find one. Give me just a second. So if we do 1,024 times 100, and, uh, like 118 to give it a little bit of breathing room. 
we have to put in 128.32, so that's not quite right. So let's do 1,024 times 117, because you want it to be under 120,000, which looks like that'll be enough. So we're just going to go 119808, and then we press apply, and then it'll make those OEM partitions that'll go onto the solid state. And then with the rest of the allocated space, we can just make one giant partition. That'll go for the physical hard drive. So that'll go onto the SSD. What? What? Okay. So it's called Windows 9 Edition. We're sounding like the Apple Watch here with the Apple Watch Edition. So I guess the version of Windows 9 we're installing is Edition. So please be patient. Dil Shad Sis is installing Windows 9 Edition on your system. Thanks for choosing Dill Shad as this product. I find it funny how all the words are caps, or they start with a capital letter. <laughs> Sounds like a cheap YouTuber. I mean, not to those who actually are, uh, you know, they type that way, you know, nothing against you, but it's kind of annoying. It also says installing Windows 9 Edition down here as well. So everything is called Windows 9 Edition, except down here it says uh, 9E. I guess they couldn't finish typing the rest of this thing out. And interestingly, the check marks are these very creatively made Windows logos. I don't know if that's intentional or what, but it's kind of hard to read them. I don't know. Either way, this setup process is very similar to Windows 7, if not the one that was used in like, you know, like Server 2008, because the one in Server 2008 felt familiar to the one that was used in this one, except that it must have been like a different process. I don't know. So, not exactly the biggest deal in the world, I guess. So anyways, um, since this is installing onto a solid state hard drive, it's not going to take too long, about 10-15 minutes at the most, to get through this part of setup. It might even take less time, because this is a Serial ATA 3 computer, and it's a Serial ATA 6 gig hard disk, so it might not be so slow after all. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'll let this thing do its job, and we shall be right back. Let's see if I can get my co-host on. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. How are you? Yes. <laughs> what are you up to? Uh, just got out of town. Oh, nice. What are you up to? I am installing... Windows 9. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I got it downloaded today, and uh, I just wish you were here to see it, because <laughs> I'm making a video about it right now. Huh? Quite literally, like, right now I'm recording, so I hope you don't mind being on camera. <laughs> I'm always on camera. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, it's not good idea videos. I'd rather do it with you before we do it on good idea videos. Right. But yeah, so yeah, I'm installing Windows 9 Edition is what it's called. It's so inconsistent. There's like Windows 9 Professional, Windows 9 Edition, there's 9E. It's like, it's so incon... In, it's so in... Oh, I, just, I just forgot the word. It's so inconsistent. Right. But it's based off Windows 7, or what looks to be Windows 7. It might be Server 2008 for all I know, because there's things that just look different from Windows 7 that are not Windows 7, but it's like, it's, I don't know. But it's 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 it, it, it's different, <laughs> so I I cannot wait to publish the video because it's gonna be crazy. So it's it's restarting right now. So huh. yeah. So anyways, um, okay. So it's been the second part of setup, and it was just installing drivers that went by like. Yeah, it just went by in like two minutes, quite literally. <laughs> oh my gosh, what the what in the heck is going on here? <laughs> oh my goodness, it's like this Facebook link on the initial setup page. <laughs> the giant, <laughs> giant like Google Images Windows wallpaper with the Windows 8 logo on it. Right. Oh my god, this this is it's just nuts. Okay, we got a very oddly stretched out Windows thingy here. Um, it's got the Windows 7 interface with the Windows 8 icon on it, which doesn't surprise me. So it's still calling itself Windows 9 Edition, which is funny. It's kind of like the Apple Watch Edition. I was saying that earlier in the video. 
So you got like the Apple Watch Edition, which is the top of the line thing. Then you got Windows 9 Edition, so. Right. Totally not stealing copyrights from Apple. <laughs> All right, you type in your username. I'll put in my first name, of course. It looks like the buttons are flattened, which is not a bad design choice. Not a bad design choice. Okay, no password. That's it? No network settings I need to set up or anything like that? Okay, now we got Windows Photo Viewer saying, Welcome, Windows 9 Pro. Uh, now they're calling it Windows 9 Pro again. <laughs> now we got a command prompt with a uh, Windows 7 boot updater by Jeff Bush. With a jeff at coderforlife.com as his email address. I should totally email that and say, Hey, I found your software. <laughs> Updating the uh, windload.exe stuff. Uh, and now it's gone. It's done. Um, it says he's doing his last minute magic. <laughs> now we've got another picture. And oh my goodness. Got a full screen interface with a bunch of the uh, software that it would like to do as an install. So let's read through some of it. Let's see. Security. USB disk security. Um how about no, because I don't need that. Security, auto run remover, uh, no. Multimedia with intercapitalization, that's annoying. Uh, KMP player, which has Arabic text on it. <laughs> uh, VLC, yeah, sure, I'll install VLC. I don't need AMP player. I don't know what the heck that is. I'll leave K-Lite K codec pack on there. That's kind of nice to have. Um, Internet Download Manager, sure. FileZilla, no, I don't use it. Uh, Skype Final, that's kind of interesting. And BitTorrent, no, I don't need. Firefox 26, I think that's just a little bit out of date, don't you think? <laughs> what are we on like now, Firefox 43? <laughs> the sign has been a couple of years. Uh, it comes with CCleaner Pro, which is kind of nice. Um, I don't need USB safely remove or glare utilities or CPU-Z or hotspot shield launch or, or team viewer. I don't need any of them. Uh, don't need notepad plus plus because I don't do that sort of stuff. Um, ultra ISO. No, I don't think I'll need that. WinRAR, Flash Player, Java. No, no, no. Eh, whatever. Just install. And now we got this weird interface. <laughs> okay, okay, that's nothing unusual. I, I've seen this with the XP stuff, so it's nothing new, but... Uh, so cheaply made, like the image is just squished horizontally. Huh. Yeah, it's very huh. IDM is successful. What, what does that say? I just went away. Oh, you need to restart IE to apply changes. Oh, error launching installer. There we go. There you go. Did you know IDM takes over a download from any browser if its type matches the list of types slash extensions? Okay. Do not show tips on startup. Um, and just open Internet Explorer. Don't need you. Here comes CCleaner Professional. Do not... Oh, no. Don't exclamation point close this window. They call it CCleaner.Professional. Oh man, this is gonna be good. This is gonna be good. I wonder what this, they have this Windows Media Player sort of interface here. I wonder if I, what happens when I press play. Will it play anything? I don't know. That's a good question. That is a good question. I'm pressing play and it's not doing anything. Right. It looks like it's just a broken interface. It doesn't look like it has anything. Um. It says it's installing this. Oh no, it already installed that. New version of Internet Download Manager is available. Um, I'm pretty. Oh no, it's Firefox 45. That's the latest version, excuse me. Um, I will not update right now because we are out of internet data, uh, sadly. So. Oh, oh, my mom turned off the internet for the day so far. Oh, that's, that's convenient. And I used all my phone's fast data. Oh, that's convenient too. So now, whenever I want to use cheat codes because I'm starting Skyrim again, I found out what was wrong with my old game. It was just corrupted. Ah, uh, that'll do it. 
But, um, so, after I, I'm just starting the game over, um, if I want to look up cheat codes, I'm going to have to, like, use a really slow internet. That's going to be fun. Yeah, hook it up to your computer and just use that to start downloading your games. <laughs> oh, oh, you thought, you, you think that's bad? Um, I had, that's what I was doing, I was watching YouTube on my computer. And what it did is, uh, I had Steam running for like a minute, but it used all my data really fastly. I'm not surprised because it, LTE is actually quite fast. Right, so, um, what ended up happening was, uh, it used all the fast data, right? And when it started trying to download with the slow data, it uh, it it said there was over a year to download one game. Oh jeez. <laughs> Which one were you trying to download? Was it? Uh... Oh, it was just it was one of my smaller mega uh, bike games as well. Uh, okay. So it's just weird. Well, we're still installing uh, ccleaner.professional. Huh. <laughs> I'm so tempted to just close the window, but it says don't exclamation point close this window. <laughs> oh, you gotta, you gotta watch out for that exclamation point, bro. It's gonna get you. <laughs> I don't know why they didn't put it at the end of the of the phrase there. Hey, Jordy, I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get your pension out. <laughs> That's Alfie. <laughs> yeah. That's the dog. Yeah, that is. I do that with DJ too. <laughs> You've done that to me too. Shh. Totally don't. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm just anxiously awaiting to see what's going to happen next. I'm going to close this photo. Okay. I'm closing this photo viewer interface. I don't know what the deal is with it being open. Uh, sure has taken a sweet time to install because because yeah, considering i'm on a solid state drive this is taking quite a while i know the cpu isn't that slow right. and it's not overheating because the fan's like dead silent huh. so i don't know guess i gotta wait some more Although, actually, I, I repasted the CPU on this computer, so no wonder the fan's, like, dead silent. Except for the power supply fan, but that's the power supply, so I can't blame it. Right. Because, uh, I don't mind the power supply noise, it's just the CPU fan noise that bug me, because this thing's got a really stupidly noisy cooler. <laughs> actually, the cooler came off an e-machine. Oh. Yeah, I got this e-machine small form factor computer, and then it died. So I saved the CPU cooler on it, and I put it on this HP. Right. And then I took the CPU cooler off the HP, put it on the e-machine, found out the e-machine didn't work. And as I just recycled huh. the computer with the cooler, I find this e-machine one to be a lot better. That's good. Stays quiet for a lot longer, doesn't ever spin up, which is nice. That is nice. Except when it spins up, it sounds like a... Oh, what do you want to call it? It sounds like a... RC car or something that just is really loud. Huh. So I'm glad it doesn't spin up. Although, uh, whenever it decides to finish installing Sleek Cleaner, we can continue. I'm gonna go and stop. Right. I'm stopping the camera. Despite the fact I have 128 gigs of storage, it's 60 FPS. That's gonna take quite a bit of space. I mean, all things considered, yeah, it's probably more efficient than the Acer, but I still think the Acer's Pentium will be faster than that thing's Celeron. Even though the Ace is like what five years old, I think. Yeah, I think um, I think even my HP's Core Two Duo is still faster than that thing seller in terms of benchmark scores. Huh. Well, I kind of like that progress bar, the flat like thing going back and forth. I kind of like that actually. That's kind of cool. Huh. On the uh, Microsoft Visual C plus plus installer, or at least on the progress bar here, it actually has this like this flat like Windows Eight style pseudo flashy thingy for the loading bar. You know what I mean? Like on Windows 8, it had like the the flat green progress bar. I know you still have 8.1, so you have like the flat green progress bar, and then the little uh, white, and then the little like lighter reflection just goes whoosh across the screen. Uh -huh. Well, this one uses like a it uses a green installer thingy, but it uses a darker green uh, progress bar 
and that goes whoosh across the, the, the progress bar. So it's kind of an interesting mix. I kind of like it, actually. <laughs> Firefox 26 failed to install. I'm not surprised. But everything else so far seems to be successful, which is a good thing. It's just installing all the Microsoft redistributables, which is probably a good thing considering the fact that it's probably got to run all this nonsensical crap that's bundled with the installation. Right. Like making Firefox 26 fail installation. That'd be interesting. Yeah. I don't know. I'll probably just use Internet Explorer. Got, I think it looks. It looked like it had Internet Explorer 10 or 11 already installed, so it's probably good enough to go. Although, if it's not Internet Explorer 11, then Microsoft isn't supporting it anymore, and you're more viable for attacks, as they say, because they quit support for pretty much every Internet Explorer besides 11, because they want people to get to Windows 10 and use Microsoft Edge. Right. Which I can see it for being Windows Vista using Internet Explorer 9. I can see where they're coming from that. No, because it because it topped out at Internet Explorer nine, but for Windows seven and Windows eight point zero, that are still using Internet Explorer ten, that's not fair, because I would expect them to at least support it until the end of this year. You know, because eight point zero can't update to Internet Explorer eleven. You have to go straight to eight point one, and then upgrade to Windows ten and use Microsoft Edge. God, I don't like that strategy for Microsoft. I don't know why they did that. Yeah, it's kind of stupid. I know, and the whole thing about making the Windows 10 upgrade a recommended update, forcing it to be downloaded on Windows 7 computers, that just doesn't make sense. Yeah. I mean, seriously, I don't know what Microsoft was possibly thinking when they came up with that. I mean, yeah... Windows 7 is getting all... Oh, crap. The Visual C++ 2012 installers in German. <laughs> oh, my God. Try I can... reading that, Jordy. Huh? Try reading that, Jordy. I can kind of recognize German, but it's not easy. Microsoft right. Software. Lizen's beste Mungen. DSA Lizen's beste Mungen sind in Vertrag Zwischen... Einen under Microsoft Corporation. <laughs> Imagine if we're recording that, that'd be a blooper right there. I am. Oh. <laughs> How could be? Good job. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so the setup thing is called Setup Force Trit. <laughs> and the uh, installation is already done. I don't even... It says set up word a er foldrich abidjolson. I can't even read that. And I don't know if this is like a cancel button or something. I don't know if the... Oh, that must have been a, comp, uh, a finish button. <laughs> Adobe Flash Player says it's a warning. <laughs> Not surprised, because Flash Player. Okay, WinRAR would be the last thing on the list, so that just finished. And now that post-installer thing is done... So now we're fading into the desktop, and surprisingly, the, uh... Oh, nice, it says, Welcome to Windows 9 Edition again. Um, and I'm surprised, it actually found my graphics card driver. I didn't have to actually install it, or I don't have to install it. That's kind of nice. And here we are onto the desktop, and, uh... Oh, my. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> um, well, they took the, uh... They took the default Windows, uh... Remember the very first, like, technical preview versions of Windows 10 where they had this blue wallpaper that you can get from Windows 8.1 in, like, the color theme? I think that was what it was called. Well, they put that on there, but then they have this, like, Windows 9 edition text just slapped on top of it, and I can't even read their www link because my monitor is not high enough resolution. And oh my god, the right-click menu's got a lot of crap in it. Oh my god. So we have Add Remove Programs, Administrative Tools, Appearance, Change Cursor, Change Theme, Change Wallpaper, Control Panel, Desktop Icon Settings, Device Manager, Freeware Sys 2014, Programs and Features, and then Windows. And then they completely took out the Properties menu. And they took out the, the, um, the gadgets, at least from this menu. I don't see gadgets in the right-click menu where it's supposed to be. 
So screen resolution brings up the typical panel, which is, you know, it's nice. That's thankful of them. So, um, let's see. Windows 9 Edition, copyright 2014, service pack 1. Manufacturer, freeware sys, model, Windows 9. That's that's a great computer name. <laughs> um, system rating not available for the Windows Experience Index, I'm not surprised. Okay, so the Core 2 Duo stuff and the RAM, everything shows up fine. Windows is not activated, but again, I'm not surprised because they didn't provide an activator, which I don't really care. Um, this is great. Phone number, facebook.com slash sys. Support hours, www.freewaresys.tk. Huh. Interesting. It is very interesting. I don't know why they put those there. I guess because they ran out of place to put them. So everything is like this flat black user interface. The system tray icons are green. The interface is quite inconsistent because uh, the menus are white. The taskbar is black. The start menu is black. Like, it's all flat, black, squared off everything, but the Explorer interface is just, like, opaque white. Huh. Let's go to the control panel here. Let's see what they installed in the programs menu that I didn't see. I wonder if they installed anything. No, it looks like they installed everything that was advertised and what I picked. There's nothing unusual. Hmm. Okay. It's building me with confidence so far. Not completely awful. Doesn't look like they installed anything like, um, you know, outdated antiviruses that I didn't want or some extraneous um, customization that I didn't want. It looks like it's fairly simple. It's just that I wish they had the properties button on the flipping right click menu on the desktop so I could actually get to change the desktop background without having to go through the bloody control panel. And in the, uh, in the default themes, we have two specifically categorized arrow themes. There's one called arrow slide which is supposed to have this desktop background that's not there. And then there's the traditional Windows 7 United States theme which actually changes the interface back to having a transparent theme to it. However it's really customized. It has like this sort of weird glass effect to it that's not Windows 7. On the top where the uh, address bar would normally be. Huh. Kind of interesting. Um, looks like that's still there. Uh, the arrow flip or whatever the flip it was called. So we have nine installed themes that completely replace all the ones from Windows 7. So we have just nine, which makes the flat interface come back. We have one called Star Trek, which has completely customized sound effects. And the buttons are extremely hard to see. Completely custom sound effects. The start menu is completely different. And the all programs button is called Warp Core. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, that's not weird at all. Um, the shutdown button is just labeled by dots. And that's kind of weird. Um, we have StarCraft 2. How peaceful it must be for you. To have a mind unburdened by thought. Interesting. What was that? that was the change theme sound effect. Huh. So we got this giant Blizzard Entertainment wallpaper with StarCraft 2 on the front of it. Um, we have this... StarCraft. StarCraft. Huh. Have you ever played StarCraft? No, not yet. So we have this huh. really hard to read start menu with the StarCraft 2 thing on the back of it. It just makes these icons really hard to read. Um, the interface is a completely customized transparent theme which has like this sort of blue gradient which actually kind of looks cool in my opinion. I think it looks really neat. Much better than the flat interface. We have wood which has a wood background with an Apple logo on it. And we have like this sort of makeshift Mac cursor. The title bar is hard to read. The interface is a uh, transparent thing that has like a color of wood to it. Um, the start menu has wood on it. It's kind of interesting. The system tray icons are still green, which is kind of inconsistent once again. We have Windows 7 Squared Blend, which has no desktop background. It's called Harmony, but it's black, so it's not there. Which, oh no, 
Windows 9 will shut down in two minutes. Shutdown will start on Sunday, February. Okay, we gotta use shutdown dash A. Uh, Why is it shutting me down? Don't shut me down. I wouldn't think it'd be because of the activation. Maybe they're trying to trick me into something. I don't know. So we've canceled the, sh the log off, which is nice. I didn't want that to log off. Tanzo 7 has like this sort of um, black interface to it. It's not flat or anything, but it has like this sort of arrowy theme to it. Like not transparent, but it has like arrows. Huh. We have X, which has this Windows 7 wallpaper to it with an interesting texture to it. Um, the interface is opaque once again, but it has a glow to it, a white glow. And um, the start menu is transparently black with an interesting effect to it. The text is so inconsistent, it's unbelievable. Um, we have X2 Crystal, which is... A transparent theme which actually has transparency in the window and has like a sort of normal start menu to it and we have zoom which has no sound effects to it at all and we have zooms on the desktop background and uh, speakers on the user interface the fonts are like there's like this weird font to it that just doesn't fit in all the basic themes are gone and then uh, I'm just going to go back to the default 9 theme for the purpose of the video, I suppose. So let's just take a look around here and we'll see what's customized on this. So the interface is definitely flattened, which kind of, it's interesting. It still combines the Windows Arrow stuff, which is kind of nice, but uh, still it's very, very inconsistent, especially the fonts. Um, Notepad has a different icon to it, and, uh, yeah, this is definitely based off Windows 7, because it's version 6.1, build 7601, so that's definitely a Windows 7 build number. But Notepad has a different icon to it. Um, oh. yeah. Hmm. Let's see. Let's see if VLC has any custom themes on it, and I know you can customize VLC to have different themes on it. Nope, at least not on the regular executable. Doesn't look like it has any themes on it. How about the skin version? Oh, that's just uh, the default theme. Freeware Sys, note, read this on the desktop. It says, this Windows is modded by Freeware Sys. If anyone want their own brand name Windows, contact us on Facebook. If you like this window, period, or get any bug, ask us on Facebook. And I love how their Twitter username is not an at sign, it's a hashtag. You know, I know something funny. What? I love how they use their official source of business as Facebook. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and, and the README file says the exact same theme, so they the so they basically use the two text files to say the exact same stuff. Gotcha. So C Cleaner is C Cleaner Professional version four point zero seven, which the latest version as of the making of this is five point one four. Four, I believe. So it looks a lot older. It definitely is a lot older. Gotcha. Again, it identifies it as Windows 7 Ultimate. So I'm not surprised. Um, so I'm guessing this Windows 9 edition is just like a mashup of Windows 8 and Windows 7? It's based off Windows 7, but it has a lot of customized elements. Gotcha. So we're running... So we're running Skype 6.14. I'm not going to sign in because I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know if there's any spyware installed on this thing, so I'm not trusting my Skype account with this. Not in the slightest. Right. Um, Windows Update has automatic updates turned off. Um, and the icons for that are flattened, which is kind of more like Windows 8 and above, which is nice. Um... Let me choose my settings. I'm going to select check for updates, but let me choose whether to download and install them. Okay, the Windows update icon was not changed to the newer one, so it's still using the classic icon uh, for Windows update. I just I just can't get over this freeware sys button and the right click button on the on the right click button thingy on the desktop. I'm going to <laughs> application not found when I clicked on it. That's funny. Um, 
Oh, interesting. They they actually do have the properties button on or the the personalized button. You know, from the right click menu on the desktop, they just renamed it to appearance and took the icon out. Oh. But it's the same exact program. It just gotcha. takes you to the same place in the control panel. Uh, let's see, device manager takes you into device manager. Nothing special there. Um, let's see. How about change wallpaper? Well, it takes you to the desktop background thingy. Administrative tools takes you to administrative tools. Um, the right click menu on the computer icon pretty much has the God mode um, device manager twice, except one of them is called device manager. And there's also MS config and registry editor. Um, all the icons on this interface are un unusually flattened, which I actually kind of like the looks of them. You know, they're unusually flattened, but they look kind of nice. I mean, it's not as bad as you'd think it would be. I mean, it these flattened icons are actually not that bad. And it looks like Windows Update's actually updating itself, which is kind of not surprising because it's Windows 7. Right. It's just all the icons are, like, flattened. It's different. It's very different. But a lot of the right. stuff is, like, definite Windows 7. They didn't change it one bit. It's just they changed oh. the interface that runs around it. It's all flattened with the default theme. Although it makes me wonder, can I actually change the color of that? Uh, no, I cannot. Uh, it's it's a permanent white theme, just like what Windows 10 initially came with, which was annoying. Huh. So yeah, Windows Media Player is the exact same. Um, the control panel is the same. Um, Java is installed by default. I think I specified that, actually. Um, some of the Windows bloat has been cut down, which is actually not bad. Um, which is... They don't have a lot of the bloatware that Windows 7 Ultimate came with. They kind of cleaned it up. So that's actually a good thing. Keeps performance running snappy. And so far, it's rock snap, like rock solid snappy. I don't even know why I just said that. <laughs> but it is. It's actually flying along with no lag whatsoever. Although, my system that I'm running it on is not laggy at all. So I'm not surprised. I mean, Windows 10 still ran like a champ on this system. So I'm not surprised Windows 7 is flying on it either. Yeah, coming to the the uh, kind of the computer properties menu, and all the icons are flattened. So it's different. It's very different. I don't have any Windows Seven Ultimate product keys, so I can't put one in. If I did, I probably would. <laughs> no, I wouldn't actually. I wouldn't waste my Windows. I wouldn't waste a Windows Seven Ultimate product key on a thing like this. I just install Windows Seven Ultimate. Um, but yeah, everything's basically like Windows 7. There's really not much different to it other than the, other than the themes and the flattened interface and the icons and, um, the installer, because the installer is like bright flipping blue, which is odd. Um, I mean, I don't dislike it. It's just different and it kind of hurt my eyes, but I kind of liked it. Huh. Let's see. Um, I'm going to go into the, what is it called, the Windows Media folder and see if there's anything custom about the, no, all the sound effects are the same, looks like. So I'm certain that one could actually restore the themes if they were motivated enough, because it looks like, oh, no, they can't because all the desktop backgrounds are gone. What's interesting, though, is that the wallpapers are all, like, these Google images, like, Windows 8 logos. That's a interesting background. <coughs> but these are all like backgrounds you can you can find on Google Images. It's basically what's inside the Windows folder. Also has this folder for Windows Dream Scene, which doesn't work on Windows 7. So I don't know why it's there. It's grayed out anyways. That was only in Windows Vista Ultimate, not Windows 7 Ultimate. So I don't understand why that's there. Um, looks like all the games are the same. All the you know, I just launched Solitaire. That's fine. Um, nothing in, unusual in the games folder. Um, I 
definitely, I don't know what's up with this Windows logo that's just sticking out of the start menu when usually like that. I don't know why they didn't just make it flush. Probably because they turned on use small icons. Yeah, that makes sense now. Because now it's flush with the start menu. Okay. It's basically just the colored in Windows logo with the legacy colors. But when you click on it, it turns white. Nice. It's racist! I'm just kidding. Yeah, I wonder what happens if I go into Winver. Oh, looks about the same as it did earlier. Again, I don't know why they call it Windows 9 Edition and Windows 9 Professional. It's all over the place. Hmm. I'm going to run the Windows Experience Index, and I wonder what I'm going to get, actually. <laughs> Just out of curiosity. Let's see how my system benchmarks. The graphics card's probably going to be the weakest part of this computer, because I'm only using a Radeon X1300. So it's kind of a piece of junk. But I'm surprised it actually installed by default and uh, actually has Windows Aero support, which is unusual. But I'm not surprised because that card came out in 2007. So it obviously has Windows 7 driver support. I could have used the onboard video, but I would have had to install a driver, which would not have been fun. Actually, no. I think Windows 7 had that driver built in. Because this machine um, came out in 08, so... I think it would have had the driver for that built in. I'm not sure, but I wouldn't trust my luck with it. Onboard videos are always temperamental. I want to put in my GTX 650 graphics card, but I don't have no 6-pin power connector on my power supply, so I have to get a, a converter to go from 6-pin uh, to two 4-pins. So I only had one of those, so I had to put it in my workstation when I put in my GTX 960 because that thing had, it had to have an 8-pin power connector. And the only breakout cable they gave you was an 8-pin to two 6-pins. <laughs> so I had to use the one 6-pin on my power supply, and I had to take the adapter to turn the other 6-pin into two 4-pin Molexes. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm lucky the graphics card and that thing even works. It's like, you have the 8-pin power thingy, which goes out to two 6-pins, which one of those 6-pins goes out to another adapter. So it's like... You have an adapter that connects to an adapter that connects to your power supply on one end. And then you have an adapter that plugs into the power supply on the other end. So it is just a mess in my workstation. So I don't know. I, I just leave it alone. As long as it works, I don't really care. I'm not really all that I'm not really all that picky about cable management because it's just uh it's just in a corner of my bedroom and that's where it sits. It's just basically my sleeper PC is what they call them. Yeah, they call them sleeper PCs because it's not like open. I don't really, I don't really care to show off my computer. My computer is meant to work. It's not meant to be fashionable. I mean, I mean, nothing against the people who like to do that. I mean, you know, go ahead. But I'm, I just don't like those sorts of machines. You know, I mean, yeah, if, if I get a case that has an acrylic open window panel like that that you can look into to see the computer, then yes, I'll accept it. But if I'm going to build my own computer, no. I'm going for a sleeper. Because, like, it just seems ridiculous to have to go through all the effort of cable managing your system to show it off and expect people to like it, you know? I don't care. <laughs> My, it, it, like I was just saying, a computer's meant to work. It's not meant to be shown off. That's just my personal preference, and, you know, other people might disagree, but, you know, they have their right to their opinions, but I just think that you know, computers are meant to function. They're not meant to be seen as much. You're just meant to just sit down and use them, basically. Now, unless you're talking about a laptop, which is different, then yes, laptops are, like, destined to look good. Because that HP Stream uh, X360 I got is, like, a, a blue that turns into a lighter blue, sort of a gradient-colored plastic. It actually looks really nice. Um... I don't know. It's just desktop computers. I don't see why they need to have big, you know, open windows on them. It just makes no sense. Unless, of course, they're lit up with, like, lights on your graphics card and lights in your case. Yeah, that would be cool. Light up, light up cooling fans and stuff like that. 
So there's my small rant for the day. Okay, Windows Experience Index finished, and we have a base score of 4.1. It actually did better than I thought it was gonna do. <laughs> it actually did a little bit better, uh, which the graphics card actually scored 0.1 better than my Radeon HD 3450. Huh. I did not think that card would score as high as I thought it would. Huh. Anyways, the CPU and RAM got a 6.7 out of 7.9, which is pretty good. That's pretty respectable. Uh, graphics got a 4.7. Gaming graphics got a 4.1. And the hard disk surprisingly got a 5.9. Even though it's an SSD, I would have expected it to get higher than that, because I would have expected it to get like a 7 point something, because it's an SSD. My guess is that it's because of the extended hard drive that it had to try and run off of as well, so I don't know. Either way, pretty respectable benchmark there. You know, it's, it's so basic, it doesn't matter anyway, but pretty respectable in terms of the Windows benchmark. And WinRAR is WinRAR. There's really nothing different about it, despite the fact it is a version from 2010. Live outdated, but still works. Still works. It still opens RAR archives, so you can't go wrong with that. RAR. It has an unlimited company license. That's crazy. Huh. Someone actually went through the trouble to actually purchase this? Like, I never buy WinRAR. I just wait for the trial to end, and then I just deal with it. Huh. Or I use 7-Zip. I, I can deal with the pop-up messages saying, oh, you're not using a registered version. I don't care if I'm using a registered version. I just dismiss you, and it works. Like, huh. I'm not paying for that software. I just use 7-Zip if I want to use something that's not going to nag me. I mean, freaking 7-Zip, I'll just use that instead. Because <laughs> it's it actually, uh, no, WinRAR also supports .7-Z files. I was going to say that uh, 7-Zip works with .7-Z files, but no, WinRAR does that too. So I shouldn't really remember that. I don't know why this desktop background has this www link that's like off the screen. Like I'm using a 1280 by 1024 monitor. I don't know, were they expecting me to use 1080p? <laughs> I mean, I've got a 1440 by 900 monitor, but hang on, let me go into the appearance thing. I'm gonna tell this background to stretch instead of fill. Yeah, it's just the guy's link again. That's nothing really impressive. So I'm curious, I'm gonna go ahead and restart this thing. I'm gonna see if there's anything different about the boot screen or anything like that. Right. Shutting down Windows Update Service. Yeah, you might have fun with that. I'm f it's funny that um, the copyright freeware sys thing replaces the version of Windows thingy that would usually show up on Windows 7. And also, I kind of like it when the uh, the when the messages that would normally show up on the on the screen, like the shutting down message and the logging off message and stuff like that, they slide in from the left instead of just pop. Right. <laughs> Windows 9 shutting down. <laughs> nice. I'm just curious to see if they changed the boot screen from the Windows 7 one, because it looked like they didn't do anything, but that might have just been initial setup. Maybe that's why they wanted me to restart. I don't know. I guess we'll see if anything's different when it restarts here. Ha! <laughs> it says Windows 9 Edition. There's no starting Windows anymore, and the copyright's not Microsoft. It's copyright freeware sys. So that must have been the only thing they changed. Huh. Must have ran some update operation. It did 172 update operations. Holy crap, that logged in quick. Although, again, I'm running an SSD, so... Oh, interesting. The network icon changes color. Um, if you have no network applied, it's red. If it's saying you have no network connection, it's yellow. And then if it's connected, it's green. With the sound icon on the taskbar, if the sound is muted, it's red. And if you have volume applied at a low volume, it's yellow um, or orange. And if you go above 66, it's green. Huh. What an interesting design choice. I kind of like that. I can dig it. I don't know what it would do if you have Wi-Fi. I have a USB Wi-Fi adapter. I'll plug that in. I'll see if that, what that does. Can you dig it? 
<laughs> okay, I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna unplug the Ethernet. I'm gonna try a USB Wi Fi adapter. I wanna see what it does with Wi Fi. Huh. Yeah, it does the same thing. You get yellow when it's got no connect. Oh, it's yellow with a yellow dot when it says connections are available. Um. If I put in my key here, which I don't really care if people see on video because you're never going to come here and use my Wi-Fi network, so it doesn't really matter if you get it or not because you're not going to be here. So having that key is nothing to you. So whatever. Um, but when it's connecting, it's blue. And then when it receives a wireless signal, it's green. And the signal bars are green. So I, I don't know if it goes like red for when your signal is low, yellow for when it's medium, and then green when it's full. Very interesting design choice on the interface. I kind of like it. Huh. I really do. The calculator icon's different. I just now noticed. Same with paint. Um, what does the getting started panel have on it? Oh, it's just the, it's just the standard Windows 7 one, except some of the icons are flattened, like the home group one and the Windows security icon. Some of the stuff has like interesting transitions, like they fade down like a like a slide, like a screen or something. Kind of like a PowerPoint transition. Right. But otherwise, basically, the interface is just Windows 7. It just has flattened interface elements. So, very interesting. I wonder if I can find the gadgets and I can apply them. I think it's called sidebar.exe. Right. Because that's what Windows Vista called it. And they mentioned that there was gadgets in there, I believe. Let's see. Um, open the control panel. I don't want you to give me the stupid menu. Um, let's see. Gadgets? No. not Control panel doesn't have it. Let's see. Let's go to backslash, which would be the hard drive, and I'm going to search for sidebar.exe, which should go by pretty quickly on the SSD, even though it's not indexed. Yeah, it looks like it's going by pretty quick. Although it hasn't found anything yet. I don't know why I just whistled that song. Yeah, I was thinking about actually installing this on my Surface um, on VMware and letting you see it. Nope, they removed the gadget services, which I'm not surprised. Uh, you know that little white flag that shows up at the bottom right corner of the screen? It tells you um, stuff like you need to install an antivirus or you need to set up your backup, stuff like that? Right. Well, if it has any messages for you, it's purple or blue. It looks purpley to what? me. That's kind of cool. Yeah. And then if you turn off all the messages... Um, it actually stays purple all the time to represent the color of the flag. Interesting. So the Action Center kind of has some stuff going for it, it looks like. So turn on messages about virus protection. I want that back on. Um, looks like everything is good there. So yeah, looks like that's Windows 9. At least that's what I can find to talk about. There's really nothing different about it. They know that's too visually different from Windows 7, um, except there's no icon picture or your default icons for your account picture. All you got is the default Windows 8 one. You know, that like that standard person icon that you would expect to see. I know you don't have a profile picture set on your Microsoft account, so it's just a little guy, <laughs> the anonymous person. But yeah. That's it. That's Windows 9 in a nutshell, basically. Um, no, I will not be distributing it once again. I don't plan to do that because I don't promote software piracy, even though uh, I downloaded this. But that's only for demonstration purposes. I don't plan on keeping this ISO. So with that in mind, thank you guys so much for watching. I want to thank Chris for being here on the phone with me. And uh, we'll see you guys later. Yeah.